I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now call the scheduled meeting of the Board of Adjustments to order. Would Mr. Bodie from the Planning and Development Office please describe the function and operation of the Board of Adjustments to our applicants in the audience? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial body established by the Board of County Commissioners under Chapter 62, Article 2, Division 4, the Bavard County Code. The Board of Adjustment is empowered to hear requests for variances to the zoning regulation and sign regulation in Chapter 62, Article 6, and Article 9. Pursuant to Florida Rules of Appellate Procedure, any person or persons jointly or severally aggrieved by any decision of the Board of Adjustment may within 30 days after the date the order is signed apply to a court of competent jurisdiction for appropriate relief. Mr. Chairman, you have four items on your agenda today. Thank you, sir. You doing this for me? You. I'd like to address the board members, the applicants, and the audience for a moment. The Board of Adjustments as a quasi-judicial board with members appointed by the Brevard County Board of Commissioners will utilize Robert's Rules of Order to conduct our meetings. The Chair is asking all board members not to ask questions while the applicants are making their presentations. 
Once the applicants have completed their presentation, we will begin board questioning with the board member who represents the applicant's district. When concluded, questioning is open to the full board. The chair will recognize each board member. Once a board member have completed their questioning, we will then open it to the audience who may be here to speak concerning the applicant's application. Anyone from the audience wishing to speak will be given the opportunity to address the board, but only once. At the conclusion of public comment, the applicant will be given additional time for rebuttal, as well as to present their final comments. Once completed, no further comment will be heard from the applicant or the public. We will not use a timer for this meeting, but we are asking that each speaker be concise in what they say, and it's important that you stay on subject and avoid information that is irrelevant. All persons speaking must provide their name and address for the public record. Those wishing not to verbally state their address may ask the clerk at the podium for an address card. Please fill it out and return it to the clerk. Are there any questions from the board members about the chair procedures? Any questions from the applicants about the chair procedures? Is there any questions from the audience about the chair procedures? Very good. Before we, be, before we go any further, <laughs> I skipped this part. Let's do this. I haven't done this for a while, so forgive me. Um, would Mr. McCann please read the definition of a hardship to the audience? An undue hardship. A variance may be granted when it will not be con uh, contrary to the public interest and we're owing to special conditions a literal, in a literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter will result in unnecessary and undue hardship. The term undue hardship has a specific legal definition in this context and essentially means that without the requested variance, the applicant will have no reasonable use of the subject property under existing development regulations. Personal medical reasons shall not be considered as grounds for establishing hard, undue hardship, sufficiently to qualify an applicant for a variance. Economic reasons may be considered only in instances where the landowner cannot yield a reasonable use and or a reasonable return under the existing land development regulations. The applicant must answer a var uh, variance hardship worksheet with six questions. The Board of Adjustments will discuss these questions today with each applicant who has requested a variance. Very well. The first order of business is to approve the mini minutes from the previous meeting. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from the previous meeting. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Done. Uh, I've been asked by the chair to mention that districts one, two, and three are represented today. Uh, districts four and five are absent uh, with notice, just so that everyone is aware. Good. Mr. Bode, may we please have the first applicant that is requesting a variance? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item one, Indian River Colony Club, Inc. <coughs> requests variance of Chapter 62, Article 6, Bavard County Code as follows. Variance number one, section 62-1945D, to permit a variance of 10 feet from an required 25-foot setback from the Easter, eastern property line. Variance number two, section 62-1945D, to permit a variance of 15 feet from the required 25-foot setback from the southern property line in a PUD planned unit development zoning classification uh, located in district number four. Would the applicant please approach the podium? Would you please state your name and address for the record? Hi, Michael Allen, Allen Engineering, 106 Dixie Lane in Cocoa Beach, representing the Indian River Colony Club. Okay, and you have turned in your, aff your affidavit to speak yes, on sir. your behalf. Okay, thank you. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear and affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do. All right, please speak into the microphone, and how may we help you today? Yes, Indian River Colony Club was established a number of years ago. They have a wonderful uh, community facility that includes a clubhouse, swimming pool. You know, it's associated with a golf course. Um, over time, it has been modified slightly here or there. But, you know, as the community has enjoyed this facility, members of the community have also asked for some improvements to this facility. Um, 
so we were tasked by Indian River Colony Com Club to come up with a, a concept plan that maintains the existing facilities out there, plus add in a few other things. The few other things include a maintenance drive behind the banquet facility so they can have access to the air handler units on top of the building. Uh, they also would like to expand their pavilion uh, to, that they share with the courts. And on top of that, they would like to add some pickleball courts, the ever growing and popular sport that it has become. So we, we went back and forth with the colony, Indian River Colony Club, came up with a, a concept plan. But in order to make it work, we need a couple variances to the 25-foot setback on the property lines to the east and the south. Uh, so we're before you, you know, asking for permission to or granting of those variances so we can proceed with the development of the upgraded facilities at the clubhouse site. Okay. First of all, have you seen all the letters that have come in? They've been presented. I, I to saw you? A, a couple of them this morning. Yes. Okay. So um, I uh, I understand that, that that pickleball is a noisy noisier sport than tennis. Um, but there are ways to mitigate that by using a softer ball, maybe going to a clay court, you know, vegetation, what have you. So um, I am here representing the board. I know there's a couple residents that are in disagreement with the, the facilities and would like to see them relocated other places. All right. You're in District 4, which is Mr. Bovell. He is unable to be here today. So I'm going to begin questioning, then I'll turn it over to these gentlemen. Um, I am looking at this Yes, sir. A sketch here. My, my first question, because I'm not sure what is being, I know the pickle, are, there's a proposed, what, shuffleboard? There well, the, in the, the, middle? the shuffleboard courts and the bocce ball courts are existing okay. uh, and, and are proposed to be relocated. There are three tennis courts out there currently um, and a, a small pavilion uh, to sit and watch. Uh, so we're we're adding three pickleball courts, enlarging the pavilion area, and re relocating basically everything in that area. Adding a few parking, uh, plus that 15-foot drive to the to the access the back of the building. The pickleball courts, though, are not extending beyond the boundaries of the current tennis courts, are they not? They are not. So it would be within the boundaries that are already currently in yes, existence. Yes, it would be the relocation of the tennis courts that are causing the request for the variance. Okay, so what am I looking at? Am I looking at current tennis courts or, in, or future tennis courts? You're looking at relocated tennis courts, so future. Okay. So the tennis courts are located currently where? I've not been to your property because it's my, not my district, so I apologize. I can show you a copy of the survey. Can you tell me in relation to this where they are? They're up in where the two northern courts are located. There's yes, two sir. up there now, and the third court is kind of up where the shuffle ball courts are. Okay. Um, but they're set, currently set back 20, a little over 25 feet from the property line. But they're going to re, they're going to move closer. To they're the going property. to shift to the property line in order to fit in that 15 foot um, maintenance drive behind the building. Yeah, it is the only reason for moving those the maintenance drive. It's yes. To shift the tennis ball courts, the only reason we're doing that is the maintenance drive in order to gain access to the air handlers on top of the roof. So you're not shifting the tennis courts to put the pickleball courts in? No, sir. Okay. So you're just shifting those so that you have an access road to be able to do the maintenance on your facility? Correct. And without the shifting of those tennis courts, how do you access that at this point? Uh, I think and it's a very expensive extended crane. Uh, it's the only way to access those air handler units currently. Okay. All right, that's my questions. Gentlemen? Do you have anything? I do. Right. Please. All right. Maybe not your preference, but is there any other location on the property where those pickleball courts could be constructed? By property, you mean all of IRCC or in this uh, tract that is known as the clubhouse facility? Say in the PUD, in, in, the, in the community. 
there have been other areas that I think have been investigated um, by the board of directors. There's one that is currently an RV parking facility, uh, but I think members shot down that proposal because it was too far away from the, the clubhouse amenities. Um, I never played pickleball before, so. I, I have not either. <laughs> but I have a pickleball question for you. Um, I've seen tennis courts with pickleball lines um, painted onto them, and yes. they've shared the use, yes. tennis and pickleball. Yes. Is that something that was considered in this situation? It, it was considered by us, but the, the board of directors asked that they be separate so that the tennis players could still play tennis while the pickleball players played pickleball. And then um, another question, if, um, if with the current configuration with the three tennis courts, if, uh, if the community removed one of the tennis courts and constructed two pickleball courts in its place, what would be the issue with that? I can't answer that. Um, that was something we tossed around as well, but I, I believe it was the, the wish of the board of directors that they wanted to maintain three and three or maintain the three courts and add three, three new ones. All right, that's all I have, thank you. I actually went to the site. So I visited the site and uh, it, it wasn't anybody playing tennis. It was very vacant. And, uh, it, it's, a, it's a little warm these days. The so only it, thing I seen was six ladies, I think, playing croquet. Hmm. And uh, I see all the letters, we have all the letters. And uh, I think the biggest thing of the whole problem here is, is the noise decibel because it's above 72 mm -hmm. and uh, pickleball is a very noisy sport and they well they can get very noisy right because everybody gets happy but I also think that a lot of the problems here is this was an elderly community and all of a sudden we have younger people moving in is what it appears mm -hmm. from my personal perspective but I may be wrong but uh, I've seen all the letters and uh, I guess what we're going to have to do is just go through it for the process here. And uh, I've driven around in the beautiful community you all have, and uh, let's see what best fits. Right. So. Uh, not currently, but I'll be available to answer. I'm sorry. If you could have a seat, please. At this time, if there's anyone that I'd speak in favor or opposition to this variance request. I have somebody coming. Uh, let me just mention one thing before I ask you, sir. If you submitted a letter, we do have those letters. And so if the information you're giving me is just to read your letter, we do have those, OK? Uh, and, and I'm doing that for the sake of time. We have read those. We know what your objections are, and we do take that into consideration, okay? Uh, so I just wanted to mention that because we don't want everybody coming up and just reading the letters we've already got, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Yes, sir. Would you please Ted, Ted state Gummit. your name and address? I'm Don Glenn, and I live at 1521 Valley Forge, right across the street from the southern line that that they're talking about moving 15 feet. Okay, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear and or affirm that the evidence that you're about to give this aborted adjustments is the truth? I do. Please speak into the microphone as best you can and are you in favor or in opposition? I am vehemently opposed. Okay. You read that in my letter. I read that in your letter. Yeah, I, I, I knew which letter you was when you said that. Okay, please go ahead. I, I thought long and hard about that letter, and I purposely wrote it the way I did because I didn't want to write a bunch of letters. That was written to the board, but it was also written to our board and to our management, yes. and that's why it was written that way. Um, I want to thank you for your time and for the your taking the effort, the effort to make uh, – to take a look at this for us and we are, I, we appreciate that i'm a tennis player i'm also a pool person and to my knowledge we haven't even gotten the pool people involved yet and when you look at that layout the pools right across the street from the pickleball courts i was only going to share 
the reason I'm here is two of my oxes are about to be gored, in my opinion. The quality of life ox, because the pickleball courts, instead of being on my front porch, I'm exaggerating to make a point. One of my, one of my fellow residents kids me about that, but I'm exaggerating to make a point. It's gonna be in my living room instead of on my front porch. And secondly, the property values. I disagree with what has been the proposal that the property values will increase because of what they're talking about doing. I believe that the exact opposite will happen to, to my home. Now, I was only gonna share three things, but based on the format and what I heard, this is not my area of expertise. I admit that right up front, but I, I can read an engineering drawing because I'm an engineer by education and I can use the common sense that I have. Um, but the pickleball courts, the drawing that I looked at, they are gonna be closer to my house than the current bocce and shuffleball courts, the way I see it. But, but again, I, you know, I, the only drawing I had was what was submitted in the request to this particular board. Um, the other thing that was not shared, the neighbors in the northern part of our community, they're the ones that expressed the, their desire not to have a dog park and pickleball in their neighborhood, just like we're expressing that now as far as our neighborhood. And then finally, we have three tennis courts. And I'm a tennis player, so you know where I'm coming from. You know, we'd like to keep those three tennis courts that we have. We don't want to give up one of our tennis courts. And I'm covering something in my letter, but it's That's appropriate okay. at this time. Because of my age and my knees and my legs, uh, you know, I have to play on soft courts or clay courts, and I knew this 30 years ago. I cannot play on hard courts anymore. And the courts that we're talk that you're talking about, to where you have pickleball and tennis, typically they're on a hard or a semi-hard. Which, and I can't play on semi-hard either. But that's neither here nor there. Nor there. The three things that I wanted to share, and I, I'm just about done. I'll make you're it fine. quick. Number one is. I did not realize until I got involved in this, I kind of knew, but I didn't know it for sure. I want to apologize, and many of them are here today. I, I want to apologize to my fellow homeowners and the residents in our community, because we're a senior community. We have a lot of residents that are in their 80s and 90s. And at this point in their life, they just want to enjoy life and have peace and quiet. And this is me apologizing. You know, I'm sorry for the involvement that I brought to their doorstep to get them involved in this. And I, I feel, I sincerely feel bad about that. The second thing that I want to share that I did not realize since I wrote my letter, it's not in there, but you've seen it because I can tell by some of the comments and what was shared. Indirectly, we're all affected by it. There is potential legal action that we're facing because many of our new residents were not informed about these changes. And I'm not just talking about people whose homes are on the property lines adjacent, the ones that are being moved, the 10 feet or the 15 feet, but I'm talking about other people in our community for whatever reasons. And that's something else that we all need to, to give consideration to. And then finally, the third thing that I was gonna share, in the last few weeks, I've been told by our board and by management that if this board grants the variance, they are prepared to do an impact study. Seems kind of backwards to me. Seems like to me you do an impact study for what you're thinking about doing or planning on doing, and if the results from that come back that there are negative complications or implications or, or impacts, then you know we wouldn't be going through this exercise. And this board, you're being asked to make a decision, an educated, good decision, which I'm sure you will make, but. I don't see how you can do that if you don't have all the facts and figures. And I just wanted to point that out. As I said before, I'm done. This is not my area of expertise. You know, I can read a blueprint. I can apply common sense. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And gentlemen, Mr. Higgins. You in lot uh, one through four. Your lot number, do you know what number it I is? I do not know the lot number. I'm 1521 Valley Forge. When you that. look at that drawing, the where the pickleball courts are, yeah. I am not the closest house right across the street. I'm the one next to it, just south of it, where the golf cart path goes between the two houses. OK. 
Okay. And uh, how about the your 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 rules from the board and the amendments set up for the development to begin with? Was there anything stated about what you can have and what you can't do all along since the development? I cannot answer that question. I, the, I'm sure there are people. Do we have here. a president of your board here. The, I don't believe our chairman is here. Correct me if I'm wrong. But 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 our our general manager is here. That's him. And he just raised right, his hand. So he'll be able to state that then, because there might be something in there that no one's looked at. I'm not sure. I, thank you for okay. asking the question. Thank you. Question, sir. Hmm. Okay. You live across the road, correct? I do. All right. So you're not at you're not adjacent to the property. You're across the road. From In my mind, I'm adjacent to the property. Just, just to illustrate, and I'll try not to exaggerate to make a point. I, I, we get a fair amount of noise, in our, and we knew this before we moved into the house, and we're in the process of moving in. That's not here nor there. But we get a fair amount of noise from the trucks that are making deliveries, the compressor trucks, the refrigerated trucks to the clubhouse, and basically, we just go inside for five or 10 minutes when they make the delivery and come back out and sit on the porch. We get a fair amount of noise from the golf equipment because we're right across the street from the chipping green. Same deal. Once that piece of equipment comes to do whatever they're doing to groom that chipping green, we'll go inside and come back out on our porch. With, with the pickleball, and as I can tell by the comments that you said, as a sport, it has a problem with the noise, not just for this board, but I would think any board of adjustment in the United States in the last two years has had pickleball before it in those in that time frame. But the uh, with pickleball, you know, I, I don't I, I'll be denied access to being able to sit on my porch for any length of time while they're playing pickleball. Your house is it uh, in relation with that putting green is right in front? Well, of it's a, it's actually a chipping green, but it's it's a putting green for all packs. It, it's right across from there, isn't right it? Right across the street. Okay, well, that's not really right on top of this then. It, uh, I, I'm less than 50 yards from the existing okay. bocce and shuffleboard. I understand where you board. live now. And okay. the reason I said that 50 yards, again, obviously I have my bias and prejudice. The articles that I've read, and, you, and you, we all see the same articles, in the last two years, you can't pick up any media at least once or twice a month. People are having problems with pickleball noise, and... We're talking 200 yards. We're not talking 200 feet. That's 600 feet. People that have whose homes are within 200 yards of pickleball are not happy with it. All right. You explained it. Now I know you live. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Is there anyone else in the audience I'd like to speak in favor of opposition? Dale, just you. His house is here. Yeah. Okay. Hello, sir. I'm Mike Ogden. I live at 1513 Valley Forge. I don't know my lot number either, but I'm the one directly opposite. You're directly course. opposite of where the courts are going to go? Across the street. Okay. Southern board. I've got you. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence that you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? Yes. And are you in favor or opposition? Opposition. You can put your hand down. Strong All right. Opposition. Please speak into your microphone. And okay. I, I'm, uh, some of this will be repetitive to what Don said, but sure. I'm very much against it. Uh, you know, the standard terms, we're going to lose our right to quiet enjoyment. I think it'll depreciate property values. It'll make it harder to sell a home. If I were moving in that neighborhood, I would not buy in my current location because of pickleball courts. Uh, I didn't really know much about pickleball until some more observant neighbors in the last month or two contacted me and told me about their concerns. So I did some research. It is the fastest growing sport in America. It's also the fastest growing source of complaints in America, amongst uh, neighbors. It's created neighbor-on-neighbor uh, -neighbor conflicts. It's created lawsuits between neighbors and HOAs. It's just been a real problem generator. Um, again, I had no exposure to it before, so I went over to Vieira and got 100 yards from a court and said, wow, this is really bad. And I got 200 yards from a court and said, that is still really annoying. I'm 100 feet. And, and from what Don said, too, and what I read, there are petitions out there that are saying he shouldn't get within 200 yards of a residence. Uh, there's a clause in here. I think it's your number six. You asked the questions about uh, uh, changes and impact, and, and the applicant stated it will be of direct benefit to surrounding parcels. None of us agree with that at all. It's a, 
it's not a benefit. It's, it's a harm to the parcels in terms of enjoyment, uh, visual too. They're moving the courts. Some people's uh, views will be just, uh, diminished greatly. So I'm strongly against it for those reasons. Um, interestingly enough, at happy hour the other night, we were talking pickleball, and a neighbor came up to me. He was a pickleball player. He said, yeah, I love the game. He said, but it's noisy, and the people who play it get really enthusiastic. They get even noisier. He says, you don't want that there. He doesn't live across from the courts. That was just his feeling. So, you know, the county has codes that are there to protect us, and I hope you enforce that code and deny this application. Okay. Thank you. Stay right there, please. Oh, Mr. Hugo. I, I concur. I concur what you say with the noise. I read the, the articles and the noise level. So that's all I have. Just this is a curiosity question. What is it about pickleball that makes it more noisy than tennis? The, the equipment, the nature of the paddle, the nature of the ball, it just makes a real loud sound. Okay. Some people have said it's like a mortar. You know, we put a, <laughs> when you're firing I, I, a motor off. I'm just not familiar with the no, game, so I apologize. It's, uh, it's over five times as loud as tennis. It's 85, a lot of excitement with it, too, isn't there? Eight, yeah, 85 decibel level. I, I probably should have looked this up on the Internet, yeah. but and I, I didn't. From what I read, neighborhoods, neighborhoods that have tried to put in the sound, acoustical absorbing panels, they just don't work at the distances okay. we're talking about. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Sir? He is right. The decibels is very high. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. James Dixon, 1112 Ironside Avenue. Okay. IRCC. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do. Okay. Are you in favor or opposed? Uh, sir? Are you in favor or in opposition? I'm opposed. Okay. How may we help My you? house is the one uh, right, right next or across from the, ten the existing tennis court right now. Okay. Uh, the issue that I think is most important has already been raised, and that's noise level. Uh, we are opposed to the simple movement of the existing complex 10 feet closer because there's a noise level that occurs in all of those courts. And I'm deaf, but I can still hear it. And you move that 10 feet closer to me, I'll hear it a lot more. The other, the other part of that is that the pickleballs are just kind of an aggravation on top of everything else. So uh, my opposition is we, do, we don't think it should be moved at all. Uh, but if, uh, and when you add pickleballs, it it's, uh, makes it totally unacceptable. So we have lived there for eight and a half years, and we coexist with the present configuration and the events that occur. Uh, it's really disruptive to our future at the IRCC. Uh, that's my comment, sir. Now, there's no road between you and the property. You're. I'm sorry. There's no road between you and the property. You're just you're adjacent to the property itself, correct? I apologize. I, I'm. I'm He's, you're next to the tennis court. court. You're next to the tennis courts, correct? You are right next to the tennis courts. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so there's no road that runs between you and the property, correct? They'll be closer, 10 foot closer to my okay. back. Yeah, I, my, I uh, understand, I understand. Uh, Questions? No. Sir? No. I, uh, no. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Please pull the microphone down and state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Ralph Walters. I live at 1136 Ironsides Avenue, IRCC. Okay, please raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do. Then are you in favor or opposition? I'm in opposition. And how may we help you? I'm going to come at this from a little different angle, Okay. not the pickleball. My home, if this variance is approved, will be directly behind the extension of the tennis courts all the way to the berm of the canal. And stay close to the microphone, please. My home will I, be... We heard you. My home will be uh, right behind the tennis courts if these courts are moved to the north to the berm of the canal. 
Now, I've lived in my home for over 25 years, my wife and I. It's 15 steps from the back door of my house to the tennis courts now. <clears throat> so I want the board to imagine walking out of your house 15 steps, and if this proposal is uh, approved, it's going to be even closer than 15 steps. And I'm going to walk into a chain link fence with a wraparound black curtain that hangs from the top of the fence to the bottom of the fence. And that's what I can look at. It takes away approximately 50% of the view that I have from my backyard uh, to the driving range, to the golf course, to the ponds beyond the driving range. It takes away my view of the horizon for the beautiful sunsets that we have here occasionally, frequently here in, in Florida. When you move these courts closer than 15 steps, I'm estimating now <coughs> with this 10-foot variance that I just heard, uh, I'm, going to be, I'm going to be at a noise level to me that I'm going to pick up more noise and more chatter that's already in my living room, but it's going to become, the volume will become that much greater when these people play tennis. Another area that if these courts are extended to the north, you're covering up a grassy area I like to call my wildlife area. It's probably less than a quarter of an acre. But within that area, we have all kinds of habitat. We've got wood storks that sun themselves on that bank. We've got sand cranes that use it. We have rabbits that run around and feed on the grass. We have turtles that come up out of that canal, walk across that green area, and lay their eggs in the sandy soil next to the tennis courts where they're currently located. This is a conversation piece for me and my wife. Every day, practically, we'll stand at our window and look at the activity that's going on in this little green area that's going to be covered over if this variance is approved. The last thing I'd like to talk about is the berm. That berm sets, it has to be a couple of feet above where the tennis courts are located right now. In the 25 years that I've been at my location, I've seen that canal come up to the bank once during a three or four day tropical storm. And I've seen it almost come up to the bank once during a hurricane. It seems to me if you're going to have to level that ground in order to com complete the removal of those tennis courts back to the berm, you're going to have to lower the berm also in order to have a level piece of ground. And that berm is our only protection to water overflowing that canal. I'm opposed to this variance. Squeezing a pickleball court into the proposed configuration, it, to me, is like putting uh, uh, 10 pounds in a five, five pound sack. The negatives, as far as I'm concerned, greatly outweigh the benefits, especially for us homeowners that are within 200 feet. So I adamantly oppose this variance. Okay. Wait a minute. Questions? Sure. Question. Your address, uh, you stated it was 1135? Yeah, it's a, there's a typo. It's 1136 It's on an here. 1136. It's a typo. Okay. Sorry about it's, that. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I, I see the berm and I see your house, which I just showed to, to Dale, so you are right on top of them. Mm -hmm. Sir? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Let me ask her, come on, she's already in the aisle. If you're going to speak to me, you do need to come to the microphone. Uh, law requires us to do that. If you're going to make comments that you feel like it's just going to be redundant and you're satisfied, then that's fine. Uh, however, I am going to ask, um, there was a question earlier that I think, you're the president or not the president? You are. Yeah. Okay, general manager. Uh, we may ask you 
uh, just simply because there was a question earlier I'd like you to be able to address. Is that okay? All right. Ma'am? My name is Nancy L. Cox. I live at 1312 Continental Avenue, IRCC. All right. I Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I certainly do. Are you in favor or opposition? Do you I, put your hand down. It's okay. <laughs> I'm dead against it. Okay. Please. Uh, I will. <clears throat> I'm a tennis player. Yes. However, I am the oldest tennis player at IRCC, male or female, and I have played there <clears throat> for three and a half years. And I have played in a tournament where they've had pickleball going, and it's very disrupt disrupting. I'm not used to this. My mouth's a little dry. I'm sorry. Uh, and it is very, very noisy. And the fact that there is more property there that the pickleball courts could be put, uh, you, we just don't need it next to the tennis courts. We have two Space Coast Tennis League senior teams there. The season starts in October. And so uh, we, we have uh, three teams at three lines. And so each one, uh, the uh, Space Coast League, will alternate with us. So at each, each uh, playtime, play day, we are able to <clears throat> oh, I apologize. Uh, we don't have to rotate. But that that being said, pickleball, as you know, it is the up and coming sport. But we don't need it there because there's also the swimming pool. Everything's right there in that one area. The uh, the shuffleboard, bocce ball, uh, and and the three tennis courts. So I'm very much opposed of it of it being put next to the tennis courts. Okay. And I don't know what day you were out there checking, but we've had a, a little bit of problem. The courts have been flooded, so we haven't been able to uh, play as much this, uh, this week. So, And I played from two to three times a week. Okay. Questions? No. I, I, thank you. No. <laughs> thank okay. you very much. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to come forward, yeah, sir, please. So. If you would, state your name and address for the record, please. John Robinson, 2710 South Courtney Parkway, Merritt Island, Florida. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do. And your position is? General Manager. Okay. Um, if you can kind of tilt the microphone up just a little bit. Thank you. Um, you had the question. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as the Board, you're familiar with all the Board rules? Yes. And everything, in the amendments and so forth. Yes, sir. Is there anything in the board rules and the amendments on the original setup, in other words, about anything they could do or did in the percentage of votes that are required, and has it been discussed, in other words, within the general membership, going to a vote to change anything? Uh, yes, sir. The, the, the documents spe specifically uh, say what the community has the right to vote on. In this case, uh, as far as the board bringing on extra items, it would be if the project was going to be over $2 million and the community would have a vote. Other than that, no, the, the board has the ability to bring on other amenities uh, as long as they're under $2 million. And everybody's been made aware, of course, in the community, of course. Yes, sir. I've been posted, I mean, on your bulletin boards and whatnot. Oh, yeah, our, our, our data restrictions bylaws are all posted online uh, and okay. available. I heard somebody say earlier that not all the residents knew this project was going forward. Or was there information sent out to all the residents of the area? Yeah, I'm, uh, we held meetings on it. I've had it in, uh, in, in uh, what I call tidbits. We put out stuff every Friday uh, in our um, uh, Colony Voice. We've put it out and we've discussed it at our quarterly meetings and forums. So, okay. And that's all required about a community. I've yes. had many dealings with them before. So. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, any other questions, sir? No, we just have. Thank you for doing that. Thank I you. appreciate it. We have two variances, too. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I could just interrupt for a second. Um, so I know that Mr. Higgins is the acting chair because our normal chair is not here, but who is acting as the chair right now? 
He asked me to because of his voice. Okay, so, and that's fine. You just need to take a vote that you're acting on his, so transferring those duties. I just want everyone yes. to be aware of that. So if you could, before you take do the I first motion, yeah, just make that. Okay. Part. Uh, upon Mr. Higgins' request, uh, he has asked me to be the acting chair today. Uh, all in favor of me being acting chair, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, sir. I, I was actually sitting here wondering about how I'm doing this, but uh, it's okay. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question? Uh, if you'll come to the microphone. Or if we could get the microphone to you, I'm not sure. I have the situation in Connecticut okay. Ropes. It's not our turn yet. It, it, it's, it, it, does it relate to the... The no, it's nothing to do with this case. Nothing to do with this case? No lot lines will be changed or anything, right? No. If it doesn't do with this case, I can't yeah, hear you yet. As far as we're concerned, he could build a building no. a little closer. Uh, ma'am, no we're not discussing that case yet. You're in the wrong case, ma'am. What? You need to sit down. It's the wrong case. Okay. I, I thought you were ready for our case. No, no, we're not ready yet. Okay, not ready yet. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I see you trying to get up. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Anyone else want to speak in favor of opposition? Sir, would you please come back to the microphone? Having heard the discussion, um, what else do you have to offer here? Well, it, it sounds like pickleballs and the noise is the, the main concern here. Um, and I don't... I'd, I'd still almost like you all to reconsider at least the, the variance on the east side to allow us to move the tennis courts over so that we can put in that maintenance drive uh, with the understanding that maybe pickleball courts are not part of the project. I don't know if that's allowed, Paul or Mr. Bodie. To I'm sorry, what was that question? You wanted to change it just to one variance? Well, I mean, can we still move forward as if we take pickleball off the table? Uh, with the variance. Okay. Well, the pickleball courts aren't into the setbacks. Correct. Which, but it, ever, it seems like everybody's complaint is the noise generated by the pickleball. We, we could put that into our motions. Okay. Right? You, you can make okay. a, a condition if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To where it wouldn't, you wouldn't have the uh, pickleball on the uh, plans there. Or, or is it better to, to table it and come back with a new concept drawing. It, are all three variances all are written in regards to? Setback of the tennis courts currently. Yeah, there's two variances. Two variances, I'm sorry. Yes. Are both in regards to the tennis courts, am I correct? Correct. Okay. As far as if you wanted to table that, that's a decision you would make. Uh, we are dealing with, at, at this point, the variances to allow you to move the tennis courts. Okay. Correct. Now we could, because of the comments that we heard, if Mr. Higgins or, or uh, if Mr. McCann wanted to make a stipulation that we'll grant this provided pickleball courts aren't built, um, he could make that stipulation into this if he so desired. Okay? okay. But that would be a stipulation he would have to make, otherwise it doesn't exist. Um, so. Question? I, I, I would suggest maybe we go with the motion, but take that out for now and deal with some other place for it later. Take the, the and, pickleball. Because you only want the access to, for the service reasons. Correct. So that's the most important thing here. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a problem with that. It would just require us to, to shift the tennis courts over, which would impact. Nothing was mentioned about that in all the conversation is of this right now. It was only about the pickleball. No, there was. I, my, I'm sorry, there, there was there discussion is? about the tennis courts being closer okay. to people's houses. Uh, I think one gentleman said he's 15 paces away now, and he would be less than 10 if this was moved. I didn't my, understand that. Way, then. I, so there was discussion about some folks not wanting the tennis courts to be relocated next to their house. I have a question. You, I, I should have asked you this, but and, and I can't now. I'm sorry. The demographics, have they changed in recent years as to ages of the people living there? I, I am not certain of. Slightly, yes. 
Okay. It, it, I'm, it's I'm, probably I'm, become a little younger. Okay. All right. Yeah. You have questions? No. All right, sir. If you don't have anything else to add, have a seat. All right. Gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Well, I'm, I'm kind of confused now because I thought the, the issue was mainly the, the pickleball. I didn't realize it was for the excess to save the money on the cranes and whatnot. That's what I thought the whole thing was, was in favor of. But uh, I don't know if we can ask that question back at that gentleman who lives there, near there. So let, me, let me redirect you guys just to put it in context. So with these variances with the south and east proper line, if the board were to approve these variances, it's not so much as to allow the pickleball courts or tennis courts, it's any recreational use that would be allowed in there to move closer unless you put a condition on your variance to say no, you, you know, that something is prohibited. That wasn't what I meant. It, uh, I meant for the access for vehicles to come through there to service the building. We know we can take and, and put the pickleball courts, take it out of there, the equation. I believe I'm correct, right? As far as I understand, yes. Yes. So, but I think I've seen a head shake back there that it's still a problem by making access. Well, yeah, and I don't want to go down All right, that. So that, I think the question's answered. That yeah. I believe that's the problem with that. Okay. I need a motion, gentlemen. Well, <clears throat> okay, with that said, and uh, I do believe it's true now that the, the, the people that are they're opposed to it are here, and um, they're not wanting any of it. So I'm going to make a motion that we deny the variances in the request for a pickleball court at this time until further notice they can do something else. Do we have a second? Should the... Uh should the motion include not that you mentioned the pickleball courts, but that's not really what the variance requests are. It's the, um, it's the setbacks, the reducing the setbacks. Okay. Uh, I, I need to ask a question, sir. I understand what the thoughts are, but we're not really dealing with the pickleball courts. We're dealing with tennis courts, correct? I mean, we can say you can't put a pickleball court in the variance that we would allow if we would allow it. Correct. But they could still put the pickleball courts on the other side if they wanted to. But if we're so, denying the variance, it doesn't even, matter. Even if you were to deny the variance right now, they still could come back yes. in and have pickleball courts as long as they met the 25-foot uh, perimeter setback. None of the setbacks they're requesting for deal with the pickleball courts. Am I correct? The way it showed on the site plan, the pickleball courts meet the setbacks from where they're okay. at. Uh, the only thing is that the two t uh, tennis courts, because they're having to move them to fit the pickleball courts in there, so if we is what they're the as asking for the variances to the tennis courts. Is what okay. Okay. What it, so what if the they didn't move shows. the tennis courts, then they wouldn't have the right. room for the pickleball exactly. courts, correct? Yes. They, they could probably put two in there and meet the setbacks. I'm not sure. I'm not the engineer okay, of the project. The, okay. Well, they could do what they want, but we're denying the variance if that be the case. Then they couldn't. Well, you say they could. You're denying the variance to the setbacks. Yes. As long as they meet the setback requirements okay. and move everything around, that's all they really could that's still put pickleball guess, right? courts in there. So I'll have to amend my so, motion. So let me, let me make, well, once we get the amendment, we'll, we'll discuss all right, well, hearing what was said so far and discussed, the legal aspects of it, I'm going to change my motion and amend the motion to deny both uh, variances of one and two, as stated in the, in the letter we received to, for the request. Okay. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, gentlemen, discussion. I guess no discussion, we've already discussed. I'll, um I'll make a few comments. Please. Um, my, my biggest concern isn't necessarily the pickleball courts because you can put them in now without the setbacks. So, you know, I know that's everybody's primary concern is having pickleball courts there. Um, but without the variance, they could still put pickleball, pickleball courts in there. They could um, also convert tennis courts to be both pickleball and tennis courts. And I know there was a gentleman who spoke that said he can only play tennis on clay. 
There's no reason they can't upgrade uh, one of the tennis courts and to clay and keep the other tennis courts. I think there's a lot of options that maybe wasn't fully explored. But my biggest concern is uh, lots one through four on the east side of the property where the tennis courts are pushing back 10 feet closer to those homes with uh, very narrow backyards to begin with. And uh, Mr. Walters, your, your um, statement um, sat with me well because you know, you, you've lived there and had a view of the, the golf course and the, uh, the wildlife area and the canal for, for many years. I think you'd be the one who's most impacted negatively by the granting of these variances, and that means a lot to me, and I don't think your enjoyment of your property should be negatively affected because of this, and that's my position. And I want to say I agree with what he just said, plus I look at the second variance is requesting a 60% deviation from code, and um, that's what we deal with on a regular basis, and when you're going that much over code, there's a reason that code exists. It's there to protect the residents around a, a specific property. And if you're eliminating 60% of that uh, protection and that buffer, I, I think that's potentially a problem. Um, let me go through the six points, if I could, please. Uh, each applicant is required to do six points, and so we're going to cover those. That special conditions and circumstances exist which are not applicable to other land structures or buildings in the applicable zoning classification. I don't think there's any special circumstances or conditions with one exception is that it's more expensive for them to reach the roof uh, currently than it would be if they were able to put an access road in. Um, that would be, as in my opinion, the only special circumstance or condition that would exist in this uh, structure, but then again, when all of this was built, maybe somebody should have thought about access uh, to the roof at that particular time. That's a special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. Um, uh, well, as I just mentioned, they, they do because it was built, it was designed, it was planned and, and put there by the applicant. The granting of the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the provision of this chapter of the lands, building structures, and identical zoning classification. Uh, that is always subjective as to whether you're giving special privilege or not. Uh, in, in this case, uh, if we granted this variance, uh, again, as I mentioned, you're taking 60% of the buffer away, and I think that's a, a special privilege that we would be granting to the applicant. That the literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties and identical zoning classification of the provisions of the chapter will constitute an unnecessary and undue hardship. It, it is not depriving them of any rights that would be enjoyed. Uh, it is not creating an undue or unnecessary hardship uh, because of what the definition of a hardship is. Uh, the definition of a hardship does not include what you desire to have, um, and so it would not be a hardship. That the variance granted is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Again, it is not, that they're, they've got a reasonable use of the land, building, and structure already. So it's not denying them a reasonable use uh, of the structure. That the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of this chapter and that such a variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. And that's probably where we're running into our biggest roadblock is several of the residents that abut the property feel like it would be injurious to them uh, as the courts would then be practically in their back door. Um, so that is that. Any other discussions, gentlemen? The only other thing is just they mentioned the crane, as you just said there, too. I don't see why that would have been a problem to begin with. The 30-ton crane could do that building easily from the excess part they have. All right. We have a motion and a second. That motion is to deny both variance requests. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm sorry, your request is denied. Mr. Bode, may we have the next applicant that is requesting a variance? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, item number two, Robert L. and Teresa A. Shack. Request variance of Chapter 62, Article 6, Bavard County Code, as follows. Variance number one, Section 62-2118D3, to permit a variance of three of 5.3 feet over the maximum 30-foot projection permitted for a boat dock. Section <coughs> variance Excuse number two. Excuse me, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, would you please remain quiet as you exit the facility? We still have other business to do. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. My apologies. Okay, variance number two, section 62-2118D3 to permit a variance of 1.2 feet over the maximum 30-foot projection permitted for a boat dock, finger dock. Um, variance number three, section 62-2118D5 to permit a variance of 60 square feet over the maximum 400 square feet permitted for the deck of a dock. Variance number four, 212 square feet over the maximum 600 square foot allowed for deck together with a roofed area in a PUD planned unit development classification located on tax count number 2606891 oh, located in district three. Uh, Dexter four, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Would the accolade please come to the podium? Please state your name and address for the record. Okay, great. Uh, Dr. Scott Herber, and my address is 351 South Lakeside Drive, Satellite Beach 32937. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear and or affirm the evidence that you're about to give the Board of Adjustments is the truth? Yes. Can you speak into the microphone directly and how may we help you? Sure. Uh, to give you a kind of an overview on the property, what we're asking for is some variances. First of all, the first variance, that five foot projection, uh, that's just to bring it into, into compliance with current code due to the fact that that uh, structure was there prior to the um, regulation changes. So it's really grandfathered in. So that's for the first one. As for the others, um, we're asking to be able to put a roof over the existing boat that's there you probably see the aerials on that and on top of that to be able to put a finger pier to access the other side of the vessel now if you look at the aerials you can see that where the uh, requested finger pier is going to be between the mangroves and the existing structure so it's not going to be protruding out into the water and on top of it yeah um, as for uh, the sure. situation is is that if it wasn't for the fact that they have extremely thick mangrove fringes varying between 20 to 40 feet this request for additional square footage would be a moot point because the that the uh, structures had to be installed at a further point out in the water to avoid mangrove impact and as you all know we can't remove mangroves that's illegal so uh, unfortunately because of that added square footage was was there and I'd sure. like to make a statement about <laughs> him calling out that the uh, projection was grandfathered in. Thank um, you, sir. To it to be grandfathered in, it would have to meet the code before and the code changed. So I don't see how this is a non-conforming to the projection and grandfathered in. Am I permitted to answer that or no? Okay, yeah, the reason is that, I mean, it's, it's been there for a long time. I mean, that, that structure's been We've there. We've had codes <coughs> for dock codes projections since 1965. Um, the Tortoise Island wasn't developed until the 80s, so. All right, well, the, there's we'll a common right mis uh, misconception that just because something exists that it's grandfathered in. And something can be built and not meet code, and then nobody noticed it. And then when you get ready to do something, right. you're going, well, it should be grandfathered in, but it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, my understanding is that there was, it was already pre-permitted. So I don't know. I'm just telling you what my understanding is, best okay. of my knowledge. All right. Okay. Do you have I think anything else to say? No, it's pretty straightforward. I think our package explains it. And also, too, okay. we have letters of support from the community that uh, indicate that they would like to see this added because it will beautify the property. All right. Mr. McKinn? With the two docks as they exist now, uh, constructed prior to the current property owners moving in there? Um, 
No, the second dock was created afterwards, and it had a permit from what I understood. The second dock is what yeah. you're calling the, the finger pier dock? No, 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 no. The second dock is, we're just looking, the only dock that we're wanting to add to it is the one that is out into the main part of the Grand Canal, right. which has a smaller vessel on that. And that finger pier would be added to wrap around the, uh, the boat, so it would be, make it, so it'd be easy to access for repairs, cleaning, things like that. Right, so, access so the, engine. The, the application, just so you know, says that the uh, second dock, they're referring to it as a finger dock. That's why I refer, that's oh, why okay. I use that term. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little finger pier that's attached to the existing dock. It's on the, on the survey drawings. And, and your request does not um, ask to, for any protrusion further out into the waterway? No, not at all. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Higgins? So the main purpose of the variance is, is for a walkway on the other side and roof. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Okay. Great. I have no one has any further questions. If you'll have a seat there on the front okay, or stand there, depending on what's about to happen. Is there anyone here that would like to speak in favor or opposition to this variance request? All right. Come forward. Go ahead and have a seat, sir. Um, may I interrupt for just a moment? Yes. Over here. Over here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I heard a voice. I didn't I know, know where it was coming from. Um, just for some procedural housekeeping, if you could read the letters, the written correspondence into the record, please. Uh, actually, we voted. Have you changed your we voted over procedure? a year ago that we did not have to read those I letters have in. A copy of the current ones. Yeah, that was done about a year and a half ago. Okay, so you're just acknowledging them but not reading them into the record. That is correct. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. We generally ask, and I neglected to, and I'll ask when he comes back up, so remind me. Okay. Uh, I generally ask if they've seen all the letters that we have, and they acknowledge they've seen them, and as long as they've seen them, then we don't need to read them into the record. You know, okay. Just, uh, Thanks for clarifying. I appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Thank you. Sir. Uh, my, na my name is Robert Sheck. I live at 256 Lanternback Island Drive, the subject property. Okay, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do. And how may we help you? I'm a licensed boat captain. I have 25 years experience navigating the intercoastal waterways in Brevard County and the canals. And when I had to make a decision on where to place my boat, the larger boat, I tried to put it on the east dock where I'm requesting the variance for the, for the roof. The boats, uh, if I put it there, it would have stuck so far out to an already narrow narrowing of the canal, I deemed it dangerous to do that. So I placed, me, I placed it on the, on the little nook on the north side of the property to keep it out of the way of the boaters. There's a lot of traffic on that intersection, a lot of nighttime boaters, a lot of teenage boaters. And in fact, my dock on the east side, where I'm requesting the variance for the roof, has already been crashed into and destroyed by a boater. Had I had my boat docked on the outside of that dock, it would ruin the course the boat would have been crashed it's, it's just dangerous inherently dangerous to add impingement to an already narrowing of, of the intercoast of the excuse me of the, of the of the Grand Canal so for safety reasons I had to put the boat on the north side and put the minimum finger dock to access that boat that put me over to 600 square feet so I had to remove the roof that was already on the dock as I'm now replacing my 30 year old roof on my house I'd like to beautify the dock and put the same matching roof tile on the boat lift dock to enhance the community. And everybody I've talked to wants the same thing. So in your opinion, it's safer where it is now than where Absolutely. it would have been. Okay. Anything, sir? We do have another letter too against the canal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to clarify, because I, I think um, Mr. Herber said he, he thought you had pulled permits for the um, what we're calling dock two or the finger dock. Is that? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say it's the east dock. The boat lift dock is on the east side of the property. I'm talking about the other one. The one you on the which north one did, side. Which one did you build? The north side. I I built after I moved into the house. Okay. And I had that was permitted and approved. Okay. And the the east side dock that I'm asking to reattach the roof to was already there when I bought the house six years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? I'm trying to understand 
Bill, I'm trying to understand the one letter that uh, we have about blocking the view, I guess because of the roof, but if it's already had a roof previous. You're telling me there was a roof on it and you took it off, correct? There was a roof that I had to remove to put the northern pier finger dock on. And and how long uh, ago was that? Five years ago, four okay. years ago. Okay, that explains, and, uh, explains that. Nobody can see that uh, roof except me or the people that are across the canal in the other community and there's almost every, I'm, a, I'm one of the few docks that doesn't have a roof on it. <laughs> it kind of looks out of place. Any other questions? He does have the address too. Not really, no. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak in favor or opposition to this variance request? Sir, if you'll come back. And I do need to ask you, have you seen all the letters in opposition and in favor? I've seen, I've seen no letters of opposition, only letters in favor. You've seen no favor. letters of opposition. We do have one, I believe. Yes, it's, I'm not sure. If I'm looking out her kitchen window, looking out her kitchen window is what she sees is your dock. And I'm trying to read if she has a name associated with this, and I think they're, they've seen one somewhere here. It's not signed. But, uh, Chandler, uh, Judy Chandler. I believe that's um, item four. That's somebody else. I oh, think. it's just get mixed up in this. Yeah. Then? Yeah. Okay. Nope. Okay. So no letters. Yeah. It's the only letters I know of are then the four in okay. in support. I was rescanning there. So. Wrong <laughs> okay. one. Yeah. Any further comments? Uh, no, I don't think any of this at this point. Okay. Any further questions, gentlemen? Nope. No. Mr. Chair, I just want to clarify for the record that we did not get any uh, letters of an opposition for this for this variance. I believe the one that you're talking about is yeah. for one that's previous. Yeah. So the one that's, uh, the last, uh, the last, the last one. one. Yes. Yeah. He just he gets stuck it got attached one. to the wrong one. He had so many, he gets stuck in the wrong one. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You may have a seat. Gentlemen, what's your pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve the two variance requests as described in the application and depicted on the survey. I'll second that motion. Uh, there's four. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, let me amend that. I make a motion to approve the four variance requests as described in the application and depicted on the survey. Second one more time, please. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And my joy of reading the six points. Here we go. Hang on. Why am I out of sorts? I have no clue. Do you have them? Oh, thank you so much. That's what I was trying to find. I couldn't find it. I moved it somewhere. Okay, number one, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are not applicable to other land structures or buildings in the applicable zoning classification. Uh, again, I don't think there's any special conditions or circumstances necessarily that exist. Um, he is in a waterway such as everyone else is. Uh, that special conditions and circumstances do not result of the actions of the applicant. Uh, the previous, the dock that we're dealing with, and I'm looking to make sure it was previously built, am I correct? Uh, he did not build this one, and so he did not cause the issue. The granting of the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the provisions of the chapter of the other lands, buildings, or structures and identical zoning classification. I don't believe it will give him any special privilege, and according to testimony that we've heard, actually makes it safer to put it where it is than, than if he would try to do something else. Number four, that the literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter should deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties and identical zoning classification under the provisions of the chapter will constitute an unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. Again, this does not meet a hardship definition, okay? Uh, so it wouldn't deprive him of any rights, it would deprive him of a want if we were to deny it. Uh, but it does not constitute a hardship. Number five, that the variance granted is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Uh, the minimum variance that he is requesting would not deprive him of the usual use of the land uh, or the building, but um, 
it, it is a desire to have the roof on the structure. Um, so it's not going to deny him of anything, any reasonable use of it, but it would just deny the use of the roof from my understanding. That the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of the chapter, and that such variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to public welfare. And as we've already discussed previously, uh, it'll actually make it safer for him to be able to uh, put it where it is rather than um, it be an issue. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the variance. Any discussion, gentlemen? No. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, your motion passes, or your variance passes. Mr. Buddy, may we have the next applicant that is requesting a variance? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number three, Daniel D. and Brandy R. Chavez request variance of Chapter 62, Article 6, Bavard County Code, as follows. Variance number one, section 62-1334-5B to permit a variance of 2.7 feet from the required 15-foot side west setback for an accessory structure. Variance number two, section 62-1334-5B to permit a variance of 3.4 feet from the required 15-foot side west setback for an accessory structure. Variance number three, Section 62-1334-4 to permit a variance of 1.5 acres from the required 2.5 acre minimum lot size in an AU agricultural zoning classification. Uh, this is located in district number one. Thank you, sir. Would the applicant please come to the podium? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Dan Chavez. I live at 5041 Palmetto Avenue, Cocoa, Florida. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? Yes. How may we help you? Well, I'm applying for a variance. Uh, I, up, please. Uh, I purchased this home in February of 2022 uh, from some uh, people who were house flippers and um, I obtained a, a pretty nice property with a structure that uh, was at some point a pole barn and I'd like to enclose the rear uh, garage carport area. It's already enclosed most of the way around. Uh, upon applying for permits, I found that the, um, the it was too close to the lot lines. Um, I'm uh, according to many of the neighbors in the area, the, the barn, pole barn that's been added to over the years, whether it's been permitted or not, has not been able to be found in Brevard County records, um, has been added to over the years, and um, I am seeking just to enclose it in, adding electricity so I can have a place to, to um, you know, like a normal garage. My, my current home does not have a garage, and... Um, so that's what I'm, I'm seeking is the variance for that. Uh, with the agricultural zoning um, concern is that I actually bought the lot in Canaveral Groves knowing that there was an agricultural classification there uh, so that I could have chickens or a goat if I wanted to. Uh, changing that um, classification would deny me the right to have an agricultural business if I wanted to, um, maybe grow plants or or whatever else uh, I wanted to do in that. Um, I hadn't planned that out so far, but I did buy the lot specifically because that whole area has one acre lots. And if you look at the, the map that has been provided with the, the area, you'll see that many of the lots are only one acre. And it, uh, I think it was, uh, the term's platted. Uh, it was platted in 1960 and so, um, I guess that would be grandfathered in. Um, so I didn't create any of these uh, particular issues. I bought a home with a pre-existing issue that wasn't uh, identified by any zoning or any, any uh, permitting activity before then. And then when I applied for the permits, all of these cases came up against my particular issue. So I've now been without almost six months without a garage to store anything in. Um, that people would normally store in a garage like my tractor. So um, it's an unfinished structure right now. And uh, that's all I have to say pretty much if you have any questions for me. Questions in the audience or no? Not yet. Okay. Starting with you. 
Okay. <clears throat> I went by here and actually seen you. Met the gentleman there and he walked out front wondering what I was doing. But uh, I've taken four pictures, two of his property, one I'm going to leave with, the, with our group here. And the first one I'm going to give you is his property itself and the garage in question is to the right there. The second one is looking from the front into his house of the place next door to him where they have their shed right, right here. The third one is a house completely behind him in the next street, exactly behind him to the, to the left of him. And this is one in the next street behind him to the right, just to his right. And uh, I think, according to what I looked at at the gentleman's place, it, it would be a, a great improvement what he's done to the property already. But compared, to, compared to, to the one next door, it has a shed right up against the fence, which I guess it did not come out. But the neighbor does have one, a shed right against the fence, two feet. But um, I don't see any problem at all whatsoever. Sir. Um, I always ask clarifying questions. Um, your property is currently zoned agriculture. Correct. Okay. But, but it's only one acre, so that's why you're looking for the variance for that. Yes, they all are, though, Kevin. In the oh, right. So I saw yeah, that so track. When I applied for permits, the zoning mm -hmm. department itself identified that it didn't meet the current state standard, as far as I understand it. And so they want to change it to what meets the current state standard. But that's unfair to me because not everybody's going to apply permits at every time. And my question to the board is, is if we have a whole area that's it's, it's probably 85% one acre that's all zoned AU. Right. Are, is the intent of the board to go through every time a permit comes up to rezone these people's? Uh, it, it would have to be. Yeah, so th that's, that's kind of unfair to those people that have lived there for so many years. But, but it's not, it's not rezoned. Just, uh, unless they rezoned it to residential, they would need to get a variance in order for it to remain in agricultural. Right, and all he's so. requesting really is just to improve that building that's there. It, he's not requesting to do anything else. No. Yeah, it's, I'm not requesting the rezoning. The planning department's requesting the rezoning. Uh, again, it's not a rezoning. Okay. It, it's a variance to the lot size. Okay, so okay. that's fine. A variance yeah. to the lot size, yeah. Sir. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Anything else? I have nothing. No. I have nothing. If you'll stand to the side for just a moment. Yes, sir. Is there anyone here in the audience that would like to speak in favor or opposition to this variance request? Seeing one. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Julie Manahan. I live at 5100 Avocado Avenue. Okay. Um, you already got it up. Here we go. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? It is. Okay, how can we help you? Um, First mother, of all, are you in favor or opposition? In favor. Okay. Uh, my mother and I have been out there 40 years. <clears throat> and um, as far as I can understand, he's not trying to change his lot size. Whoever built that garage built it cattywampus. Mm -hmm. So at one end, it's okay. And at the other end, it isn't. All he wants to do is close it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's a new neighbor. Why not? What's, okay. the, what's the problem with him closing it in? Um, as I understand it, I thought we were all an acre and a quarter out there, which is 209 feet by 325 feet, correct? Are we an acre or are we an acre and a quarter? Let me, let, let me help you guys out. Thank so, you. I'm, I'm looking yeah. at an acre of, with what I've got here in front of me. So AC is an agricultural zoning classification yes. that is a minimum of two and a half acres. Yes, sir. So, and, and the lot size is, is well, the, each zoning district has its own requirements. However, for uh, AU, it requires two and a half acres. So... Um, this lot is one acre, so it does not meet the minimum lot size for AU. Correct. Okay. So he would have to buy three lots to become AU because his lot is... Now, he, he's already... 
one acre. My understanding, and, and please correct me, it's currently zoned AU. Correct. But mm -hmm. since he's getting ready to build on it, it doesn't meet the AU requirements. So we have to give him a variance to the size of the property so he can remain AU. Otherwise, then he would have to go through the process of rezoning like he was talking about earlier, okay, which is not what we're doing. All we're doing is giving him a variance to the lot size if it is approved. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and an another question for my own behalf here, which sort of, okay, they say 15 feet. If your lot, does this work? Can I make now, that? Now, just tell me what you're talking about. All right. If you have your lot and they're mm -hmm. saying 15 feet, does that mean 15 feet of my land or 15 feet between me and the next person? Seven, 15 feet, seven and a half 15 on my feet side. from the border of your property inside. So 30 feet all the way around. No, 15 feet. F 15 feet, 15 feet, 15 feet. Well, the, the front and back so. are gonna be different. We're only right. talking about the sides when we talk about the 15 feet. Okay. So we're going 15 feet from his property line. That's what he's supposed to meet. Okay. Hmm. Interesting that you pay taxes on 15 feet on both sides, but you really can't use it. You can use it. You just can't build in it. Can't build anything on it. Without okay. a variance. Um, anyway, okay. I, I think he should be allowed to close in his garage. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I can't I can't from there, hon. She did. She got you. Come on back, sir. Well, I, I better. Anybody else here speak in favor of opposition? I thought everybody else was for the next one. Okay. Final comments? Uh, thank you for volunteering on the board and being a hedge of justice and mercy for in, in my behalf in this case. So thank you for your time and I appreciate uh, what the county has done for me. And uh, I'm at the mercy of your, of your uh, judgment. All right. Any further questions, gentlemen? You may have a seat, sir. What's your pleasure? I'd like to make a motion that we accept the three variances requested according to the submission. We have a motion to approve the variances that are requested as depicted on survey. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? All right. Why did I close it? I had it in front of me and I closed it. Here we go. Number one, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are not applicable to other lands, buildings, structures in the applicable zone and classification. He has a structure that was built, there is special conditions and circumstances in that there's a structure that was built previous to him, number one. Number two, this land was put in the configuration that is a, it is in. Um, he didn't subdivide it off and then come back in and say, hey, I messed up or whatever. So there are special conditions and circumstances. Special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant and it does not, he did not divide the land nor did he build the structure. The granting of the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege as denied by the provisions of this chapter. Do any other lands, buildings, or structures in the identical zoning classification? It would not because we have dealt with this on many occasions where property has been many years ago less than what current zoning has or that the structure has been built that was not built and we have given variances for those uh, particular structures. That literal enforcement of this provision or chapter would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the identical zoning classification and the provisions of the chapter and will constitute an unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. I think in this case, the undue hardship would definitely come into play because he would have to go through a rezoning process as well as he'd have to remove a structure that he did not build and you know rebuild that same structure. Number five, that the variance granted is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure, and that is so. And that the granting of this variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of this chapter, and such variance will not be injurious to the area involved and otherwise detrimental to public welfare. All the other properties in that general area are the same size, so it's not going to be a situation where it's going to be 
uh, harm harmful to the general area. As a matter of fact, granting the variance will be advantageous to the area because he's going to be able to improve that structure. Any other discussion, gentlemen? We have a motion to approve the variances as depicted on survey. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And your variance is approved. Mr. Bowden, may we have the next applicant that is requesting a variance? Yes, item number four, Sean M. Beard and Don M. Ostrovic request variance of Chapter 62, Article 6, Bavard County Code as follows. Variance number one, Section 62-2118-D2 to permit a variance of 5.5 feet from the request required east 7.5 foot side setback for a dock. Variance number two, Section 62 dash 2118D2 to permit a variance of 5.5 feet from the required west 7.5 side setback for a dock. Variance number three, five feet over the 30 foot projection required for a dock in an RU-2-15 medium density multifamily residential zoning classification located on Tax account number 2606765 in District 4. Would the applicant please come to there? You are. <laughs> Hi. Hello, sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Davin Erickson, 1240 St. George Road, Merritt Island, Florida, 32952, uh, representing the Beards. Okay. And you've turned in all your affidavits to be able to speak, correct? I have. Thank you, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? Yes, sir, I do. And how may we help you today? We are um, applying for a variance for to reduce our setbacks and exceed the projections into the waterway. Uh, the submittals that we have done, I, I've looked at the opposition paperwork that was submitted by the neighbor to the west and we can use that to go in regards to what we're seeking. If you look at the property lines, it zigzags through his property. All of the homes to the east, their property lines are upland of 15 feet. The ones to the southwest are at the property lines. That's why they have a marker roughly 10 feet back inland. When we first came in and applied for a seawall permit, we wanted to make sure we can get a boat lift in. And with the setbacks that come in at the diagonal pie in the seven and a half feet, we would not achieve that. So I talked with and had several conversations and meetings with Public Works, Tony Vitale, and with zoning and natural resources. And the plan I came up with was because this is a natural body of water, not necessarily a canal, which is man-made. It sat in a different zoning from what my conversation with natural resources were. So I had an original submittal that you'll see what they submitted that we, you know, we don't follow our plans, but I got that approved with a very significant plan on how to attack the erosion on both sides of the properties. And everybody seemed it was fine. They brought opposition to natural resources and flagged everything. That's fine. Underneath the public works code, you are not allowed to go and exceed more than four feet from your property line. And if you look at the property marker to the east side, we are inland right there. And where they wanted the new wall is going to exceed the four feet. So on the new plan, after all, everything got nixed. My original plan was to cut across from the property line to meet the 10 foot setback on his because if it's a natural body of water, we can come inland. But they considered it dredging. There was a real big gray area. So to avoid any complications in litigation, natural resources and I decided let's just for all purposes run it on the backside of the existing revetment. That created an issue to put the boat lift in. You know, and they're only going to get a 20 foot boat and we're asking for 25 feet just because of the way the thing sits. So we, we want to be able to bring it in and we had to bring everything up because everybody to the east is all rock revetment. 
Everybody to the west is seawalls. And the way this property line zigzags through, you know, they have a serious hardship here. They're not able to achieve what everybody else is doing. That's why I wanted to bring, if I brought it in the way they allowed us, the boat lift would fit in fine. Their problem is it's blocking their view, all right? So they still have access from their home for the view, and we're not trying to block anybody's view just to have the same rights that all the other homeowners have. Okay. No question. Kevin? And I, did, I do want to clarify one misconception that the community and as well as many people that I've seen, they are under the impression we're going 30 feet out from our new seawall. Okay, and also that new seawall that's in there, we had to get an as-built survey. So the surveyors came out, plotted it, showed it on a survey, submitted it to the building department and natural resources. They approved the location of the seawall. We also took coquina and did a revetment on both corners to, uh, to avoid any erosion. And we have pictures of that. We did not submit it to you, but I didn't realize that we're going to be talking about something different today other than just our boat lift, you know, and what it's protecting. But we protected both properties, and we have pictures of that. Um, so, but it shows on the actual proposed plan only 22 feet on one side and 25 feet from the seawall, but we're asking for 35 feet from the property lines. And so there has been a misconception with the community regarding that. The seawall's built further out into the water than the property line. <laughs> well, um, if you look at the as-built survey and the proposed permit that I was given by Natural Resources on the second time around, it says specifically, new seawall to be placed at the top of the rock revetment. All right, we took all the rock out and we gave it all to the west neighbor and they redid their entire wall and we took the rest of the rock and we have pictures of where that rock ended. It was covered with grass, but we have pictures of where all the rock was and our wall wasn't anywhere moved forward than what is allowed on our permit that says new seawall to be placed at the top of our rock revetment. All right, so you're, you, your variance is to we would like to get a finger pier to because my boat lift manufacturer says specifically this lift is not intended to lift people they can only drive forward to that seawall and for them to enter their boat lift from the seawall it is dangerous on the lift so we're asking for some finger piers to stay within our property line we're going to try to stay two and a half feet off and then only get out the 25 feet max from the seawall which is no more than 35 right. feet from the property line. Right. That's what, that was my question. The seawall is further out than the property line, and that's why you're only asking for... Yes, sir. You're asking for 30 feet, but you really only need 25 <coughs> from the seawall out. Seawall. Yes, sir. Or thir 30 feet, I'm sorry. Uh, it, correct. 30 feet, right. And then you mentioned that... Well, no, under, well hold on. Under the law, under the code, 20% the width of the canal, no max of 30 feet into the waterway if you have a wider wa waterway than 120 feet, you know allowing you to go to 30 feet from property line. Yeah, the most he could uh, project out would be 30 feet. Right. And that's measured off of his property line. Um, so and we are projecting. All right, I, okay, I see. 35 feet yep. off of the property line. Right. Uh, the maximum that he's projecting off of the existing seawall is 25 feet. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned the, the, the davit. Uh, <coughs> Lift. Okay, and that lift, rather, yes, sir. was X amount of pounds it could lift. It, is it just rated for the boat itself, you're saying? Well, there's many size boat lifts. I can lift up to 30,000 pounds. This specific boat is only an 18-footer, max with 20-foot with the motor, and the boat lift is a, a 10K lift. It's a 10,000-pound lift, okay. so it'll lift that boat. It, not, a very big, not a very big lift. It's just enough to accommodate that lift. Or okay. that boat. But by accident, that it would, if somebody was on that boat, two people or something. Uh... Okay, I tell people all the time if it was my house, I'd be walking on the boat lift, cleaning my boat. Yeah. Okay. But as the builder, under liability, and I have to say I that. I just wanted to get to that point, yes. Yes. But okay. technically, it says it on the lift you're not supposed to. I know. Been there, done that. <laughs> Is the 
Not just to the west of you, like right on the property line almost? It was. He removed all of that. He had oh, okay. um, erosion underneath his dock, and there was concrete blocks and cinder blocks and poured concrete. Um, and we stayed um, to the east of that, and then we filled it with concrete and then added uh, rock revetment to shore him up, you know, okay. other than what they're saying that we did. But we, we have pictures, you know, that we did not submit because I didn't know we were, you know, arguing our seawall integrity at this point. But that is the case. Okay. So my question to you then, if we were to grant you the variance and you built your lift, and he decides he wants to put in a, a, a dock or a lift or what, is he going to have room to do mm -hmm. that? Yeah. His property line comes way over here and he projects out. He'll be able to get a boat lift straight in. Okay. You know, I'm not a surveyor and the, I haven't, I haven't addressed biggest, that, but when I first looked at it, he would. The biggest concern I always have with these is twofold. Number one, the safety, you know, people being able to get their boats in and out, and, you know, winds come, waves, whatever that it doesn't create a, a safety issue. Secondly is if somebody's wanting to do something after you do yours, do they still have room to do that? Or by us granting you this variance, all of a sudden they can't do what they might want to do with their property. Right. So you think both of those are not an issue? Um, you know, the way, the way they have theirs, um, yeah. I don't know how their property lines are. They'd have to go into projections and, and do the same thing that we have done. Um, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't depict that just by looking at the survey. I think this is it right here, right? Mr. Bodie, you, you've looked at these. Do you foresee that being an issue down the road? Because that, that comes to such a point there is what my concern is. I think that the dock, I mean, the property to the west has the same problem. It's a pie shaped and they might have to come through and, and do the same thing as Davin's doing for these people. Um, as far as it being interfering, I'm not sure if it's going to interfere or not. He's keeping within his projections and asking for these variances to the, uh, to the seven and a half foot setback. Okay. Could you do a walkway on one side and not the other side? Absolutely. Because you're asking for a walkway on both sides, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So if we were to say, and if I had to, I could shrink. I didn't mean to interrupt. You. I could shrink it to 11 feet, which you know. Right, but if we were to say you could put the walkway on the east side, but not the west, so then you wouldn't hamper that guy if he decided to do something. Sure. Would, would that still meet what you're wanting to do? Absolutely. Okay. Does, gentlemen, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because that's the only place I see where there might be a problem, is that walkway on the west side. If he decides he wants to do something, I, I don't know how at that point you're, you're going to be able to. That, that's my only concern. Okay. I, I, I understand. It's okay. still going to have a structure, though, going out two feet from your property line extension, isn't it, Davin? The boat lifts. I mean, the poles, yes. Yes. So, so it doesn't matter. You're still going to have a structure up. there. Yeah. That's that's two. Is feet the walkway from, is the walkway then inside that structure? Yeah. Yes, the walkway is, is going to be two feet from it. He's going to have poles two feet from it. So, it, you know. Okay, I was thinking that walkway was. No, the walkway would outside have to the, that structure. No, no. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Other questions, gentlemen? You mentioned something about. The, um, the structure would possibly impact the view of your neighbors or their, the owner's neighbors? Well, that's what they claim. I mean, th there's, there's a pretty good view out there. Um, you know, the, the fence is, is, you know, you have a 15 foot setback from the, the property line or the water's edge back that has to be a four footer and the rest of it can be six foot. Um, with that six foot line, you know, it's still, that, that still impedes. You know, they, they're up at a higher elevation, so they could see right over the boat. You know, I mean, they, it, it's, it's all a matter of interpretation on that. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at um, uh, house number 453, which is the one right to the left of it. It looks like you're going to extend further into the view of that house 
at least that's what it looks like from from the overheads. Well, we're you know where the seawall is now. We're only going out 22 feet on that corner. And then if the if four five three wanted to do the same thing that you guys are doing, put a put a dock in that extends out and put the put a lift on it, would they even have room to do that? Well, that's what they were just speaking about. I mean, they'd have to go through the variance process. No, I I understand that, but you, you as a, a dock builder, I mean, you know what you know you, what you need, you, what, what, how much room you need to navigate the boat. Would they be able to even navigate their boat in there? Yeah, because there's nothing on the 457 side, and they're able to go and have theirs in, and as long as you're coming in straight forward with the with the vessel, you, you should be able to make it in there fine. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Nope. If you'd like to have a seat. Thank you. Is there anyone here desiring to speak in favor or opposition to this variance request? Please come forward. I have the lady behind you, then I'll come to you, sir. Pull the microphone down to you, and please state your name and address for the record. Dawn Ostovich, 449 Red Sailway, Satellite Beach. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do. Are you in favor or opposition? I am in favor. And how may we help you? <clears throat> um, I wanted to kind of clarify that um, previously, I, am I allowed to put something on the display here? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Um, previously, there was a boat slip uh, and a dock there that we had to remove to put in our new seawall and that mm -hmm total uh, square footage of that boat slip and that dock was 750 square feet and it did not interfere with 453's side we had our boat coming in and out of that boat slip every weekend and there was no interference with 453 453 could have put a boat ha actually had a boat slip but removed everything except the pylons so previously both sides were pulling boats in and out, and there was never an issue. The new uh, boat slip that we're trying to put in is less than 300 square feet, barely 300 square feet. We're not asking, sorry about the cry. We're not asking for anything out of the ordinary. Both Sean and I have worked very hard, saved up for a long time to have a house on the water in a nice community to get a boat in and out, all we're asking is to put a boat slip in. And um, I just didn't, don't think it's unreasonable. I just wanted to state that. Okay. Gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Kurt Chandler. Uh, 492 Jolly Roger Drive is my primary residence. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? Absolutely, I do. So do you have, before we start, either house, you're not on either side of this gentleman? I, I actually own the residence of, shown as Lot 21 453 Red Sail Drive, of which my parents are residents. Okay, is that, forgive me, left or right, east or west of this Um Left or right? If left. I'm looking at it from yeah, the river. It's left. Okay. So that's the one, the little, okay. Gotcha. Yes. So, um, and I don't know if you can see. Can yeah, you, I'm good. Uh, I'm okay. Good. Um, so yes, there you see the circle 453. That's the property that I own. The subject property just to the right of that 449. Uh, we have a very, very small waterfront there at, at 30 feet. This is the uh, original plat lines. And uh, what I think was important to point out here that our property, albeit very, very small water's edge, the property line extended straight on either side, you know, giving a, a, a wider view, if you will, of the, of the waterfront. Um, there's a couple of uh, um, points I guess I want to make, but can we advance to the next page? Or do I have control of that? Ah, great. Um, so yes, this, I went ahead too, sorry. All 
Okay. Um, as Gavin pointed out, they first did a permit, and if you look real close up there on the left side, the, the property point that's between my property and, and the subject property, um, that's a witness point that was 10.25 feet off of the property corner with the shoreline. That was represented as the property line to the homeowners association, which the resident at the subject property is uh, on the board of who gets, you know, the architectural control board. Um, that, that spot, that witness point was represented as the property corner to the contractor and ultimately to the county which approved this. I called a meeting with the, uh, the contractor and said, hey, what about my 10 and a half feet that extends down there? It's just gonna fall into the lagoon. How are you gonna protect that? Um, his first response was, well, it's their property, they can do what they want. And subsequently he said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And in all honesty, they did throw some rock up there. I think it was, didn't really stop the erosion, but they, but they did. Um, feeling like this was a, a problem, I brought it to the attention of Leanne McCullough, who her approval stamp is on this, and pointed out to her that, in fact, that was a witness point 10.25 feet off of the property. She immediately um, gave me a letter of apology uh, and retracted this permit only to go to uh, a revised permit. And the point I want to make here is, yes, this permit was granted with the demand that the new seawall be placed at top of rock revetment. And if you heard the contractor just a little bit ago, he said, we put it inland of the, and they, they most certainly did. They put it inland of that revetment. And, you know, that might be a, a small point, but um, it, it bears witness that, sorry, uh, if you look at this drawing and where the new line was, was just on the inside of the revetment. However, the county's permit, again, demanded it be at the top. But if you look real closely at that drawing and where that new wall is proposed, then look at this, which is the as-built drawing that they submitted with these variances. That new seawall is moved in even further. I'm going to interrupt you for just sure. a minute. We're not dealing with the seawall. I, I understand that. Okay, we're dealing okay. with the dock, and so, so that's where I need to keep you focused. Uh, sure. Okay. And, and, you know, thank you for that. So if you look at the inset here of what their proposed dock is, how it comes off of the wall. The reason I was bringing up the wall is because they've changed the angle of the wall so that it points even more towards our property. And had they left it the straight line that the county plat would, it would be a different ballpark, right? Um, so that, that was the point of bringing up the wall. Okay. Um, that and <laughs> one, one other thing, I guess, I believe they did not follow the permit of building the wall. So why should I believe they're going to follow a, a variance? You know, we've given them an inch. They took a mile. I believe they'll do it again. Okay. Um, this, this picture shows the shoreline was moved in. And I'll move along here because this is the real point that I want to make. Um, my parents, I bought this house for and with them in 2009. They've been married for almost 70 years, 66 years or something, I don't know. And my mom continuously makes dinner for my dad every day. The kitchen sink is so important to her. When I bought, or when I showed her this house, it's very, very faint, but you can see the apex there. This is where the kitchen sink is. And that's the view they had, again, as Gavin pointed out, the uh, four foot fence you know, allowed that view there. And if we go forward with, and there's no misconception, that's 22 feet out. I understand what they're asking for, but that shows and depicts the reduced view that my mother will have. And 
I believe it would be a shame not to fight for my mother's view of her, of her dream house. Mm -hmm. um, in summary, I believe the residents have not followed permit rules. The wall was not built at top. Stay close to the mic. The, uh, the recent seawall construction created erosion problems on both sides. Again, I don't trust that they will necessarily stay within the guidelines. And as far as the hardship paper, they talk about the existing dock. A, it was not a lift. They're talking about a lift, which is much more vertical. The existing dock that they mention on the hardship doesn't exist. I think that's disingenuous because they, when they put in the wall and changed the angle and moved that wall inland, they removed all that. So it does not exist today. Um, and the real hardship, I believe, would be the reduction of view that my mother has from the kitchen sink. I didn't know she wrote that letter, by the way. Um, and lastly, I think the granting the variance would decrease the value of our property. Um, there's a, in addition, that, that concludes what I have to say. There is a written statement from Ms. Charlotte Smith that I believe you have. Um, there is also a written statement by Dr. Ballad Barker that came in last night. He was on vacation. Michigan. We, we have all those. We have oh, them. You have that? Great. Um, and finally, there is a signed petition of a number of signatures from the community well. um, that, again, most of those are in the impacted region, but uh, they realize that if any property in the neighborhood goes down in value, so does theirs. Okay. Yes, it wasn't no? obvious, I was opposed. I'm sorry. No, stay right here, please. Any questions, sir? Mr. Higgins? Let's see if he goes first. I'm Mr. Gonna, I'm gonna get in my mind. I don't, no. Well, if I'm looking at this right, this is a new seawall right here, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Well, compared to what it was, it's an improvement, the seawall. It, uh, and I, I understand your feelings for the, for the view, but also we have to understand the people on the other side, what they want to do, and it's not our job to understand, is the inspector doing his job? That's the inspectors, the Brevard County part. When, as far when as you say, I questioned it on the improvement. I mean, obviously it's an improvement from uh, erosion of their property. However, the angle and placement of the wall created erosion on my property and Mrs. Smith's property. Well, I guess that interprets it. Man, if you had left his all dirt, yours, is, yours doesn't have a concrete sea wall, does it? Well, based on the erosion that, sorry, based on the erosion that this moving the wall inland created. Yes, I found a contractor and you know, $40,000 to put a wall in to shore up our property that was exposed. But most of them there are not. Most of them are rock revetment. Yes. Okay, I have in, no in more both questions. Directions. Thank you, sir. I do have a question. Sir. Um, is there a dock at your mother and father's place right now? At, at today, no, for similar reasons. I had to put up a wall to, to shore up the erosion problems. The, the dock that, that was there was dilapidated. We are not, we currently don't have any plans to put a dock there. We would like the opportunity to do so, but $40,000 for the wall tapped us out, to be honest with you. Should you, want, should you want to do a dock similar to your next door neighbor's proposal? Would, do you think there's room to put that in and you think that both property owners can navigate boats into that area? Um, I'll go back to the, the plat line. The way our, our property lines come in at that mm -hmm. sharp of an angle, personally, I don't think so. And again, the way they've angled theirs to coming in straight as they're backing their boat out is going to cause a lot of backwash uh, onto our property because they would be cutting across our property to, to dock their boat because of the angle that's coming in. 
So going in is one thing, not that big of a deal maybe, but as they back is up. Is that the angle that you're talking about, or is that no, to pick the, the old angle? angle which it's, more, is, it's more of an angle. Yeah, it's on the left side there. Okay. The wall is probably in about five feet. Okay. And on the right side, it's out about five feet. Okay. To create a straight line. I see. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anyone else I'd like to speak in favor of opposition? Good afternoon. Your name and address for the record. Sean Beard, 449 Red Cell Way. Closer to the microphone, please. 449 Red Cell Way. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear from the evidence you're about to give this board is the truth? I do. How may we help you? A few things. One, I need to give you a brief history to get to where we are right now, and I'll make it short. Okay. Uh, we purchased the home in 2019 of December. It was a total gut job. The, okay. no, the swimming pool hadn't had a, uh, a pump for six months. I mean, it was literally, it had been abandoned almost for years. Okay. We've poured our heart and soul, every dollar we've had to redo the home, and everybody in the neighborhood loves it. Um, we thought that doing the seawall, we, we really didn't know we could do a seawall until we were uh, told by Brevard County that we could. So we thought, well, that'd be great if we could actually use our backyard because at the time it was such a slope. And if I could give you these pictures, I can't. They're very important, especially the one about the window. Am I allowed to? Yeah, you, you, um, you, can, you can look at those. Yeah, we just need, I've we, got to keep them. Yeah, give them you, back. you need to keep okay. them. There's some before and after pictures, and then also the picture pertaining to the window view. Um, but back to what I was stating is that we built the wall um, to improve not only our property, but also to stabilize this, the coquina wall that was there. Because as you can imagine, if the property had been abandoned basically for two years, that uh, coquina wall was almost completely covered up. And I think that's where the confusion is for Mr. Chandler is that he doesn't realize that the coquina was probably about two feet thick um, across the front, covered with grass, which that doesn't matter. I guess my point was, is that we weren't trying to do anything. We followed the rules, the seawall was approved onto the boat slip. Um, with the one that we were requesting, we wanted to go as minimal as possible. Uh, we would be happy to negotiate if it gets us a boat on the water. My dream was to own a house that was on the water where I could have a boat in my backyard. This is our, our very own first boat. So we keep it right now in storage for the past year, trying to go through this. Um, to not allow us to do this and with tearing down the existing one we had, I mean, the financial loss on our property value has got to be close to 10 to 15%, which as you can imagine on the water, it pushes close to six figures. Um, which I feel is very, very substantial. It is to me. Some people it's not. For me, it's, it's a life savings <laughs> so far. So, um, and as far as erosion goes, I, I'm very confused because if you can see in the pictures I gave you, what we did shored up both sides more than they were before. Um, so I, I'm very confused on that. Now, since he started his seawall, which he's doing, He's removed all the rock that, or a lot of the rock that were on that side that we did to protect his side. He said they were going to move them back. I'll take it that he is. On the point of him wanting to get a boat dock of his own, I won't challenge his variance if he wants to put a boat slip in. Because to me, I feel like if he's on the water and there's, he's capable of doing within the property lines, I would have no problem with it as long as you guys are okay with it. So. All I'm asking is the minimal I can do to put my boat in my backyard on a boat slip. Please. Well, the question of uh, previous to the comment come up by the other gentleman about the returns. Yes. Well, I'm not sure he's seen that picture. He probably knows that anyhow. That return of the concrete, I think, far supersedes what was there present past. Oh, he, and they know. They've seen it. All right, because that, that for return is pretty good to yeah, protect that. Absolutely, and it's higher than it was before. If you see the revetment that we yes, put. I did. Uh, prior to purchasing the house, did you expect an issue 
with the size of this property and, and the configuration of this property in order to put a um, boat slip or, or boat lift in at some point? We thought it would be a challenge. We knew there were restrictions. We weren't sure if we were able to repair the one that was existing because the existing one was literally the back pylons, I think, were on the property line. I mean, if you looked, it almost, we found out from our contractor that there was two pylons. There was one in the very back and then one right next to it about a foot and a half over. We found out that that one was still on our property. And I was like, God, it looks like it's right in front of their, their house. So um, I assume with us being able to move it over, the size being 40 feet, as opposed to they're only 30, that we would have, we would be able to do it, yes, to answer your question. You know, I might have missed this in the initial presentation. Is there expected to be a roof on this? No, dock? we did that specifically because we knew that, that it was already hampering issues with views and things like that because we had talked to them previously about this. Mm -hmm. So we, and I was, I mean, we had thought about a roof, but I was like, you know, you know what? I just, as long as I can get my boat in the backyard, I'll be happy if it's no roof, four poles, and a lift. <laughs> That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak in favor or opposition to this variance request? That that's not what I asked. Is there anybody else that'd like to speak? Did, did you get my letter? I'm sorry. We did. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I have it. <laughs> please state your name and address for the record. Tamara Hudson. Hold the mic down to you, please. Tamara Hudson, 481 Red Sailway, Satellite Beach, Florida, 32937. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I do, and I'm and her daughter. And you're opposed? I'm opposed. Okay. Stay and in the microphone. I disagree and how can we that the whatever the seawall is, is an improvement. Because on her side, there are gaps where the yard used to be holes. And okay. it's been, I don't know how long, it's not been that long. And it's also- I, I'm, I'm gonna stop you for just a minute. We're not dealing with the seawall. Okay. I would like I'm you to with stick to no um, variances. I would just like you to stick to what is supposed to be done. Okay. Because her, she's already been affected by their, the lot, their property is too small for a big boat. That's what it amounts to, and we're sorry, but we didn't do that, and it's been that way since the late '70s. So. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, hang tight. Any questions, ma'am? Hang, ma'am. Hang on. No. Sir? No. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. Hi. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm Donna Morris. I live at 465 Red Sail Way in Satellite Beach. Pull the microphone up just a yep. little bit, please. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give this Board of Adjustments is the truth? I will. Are you in favor of opposition? I'm in favor of the variance. Okay. Please speak into the microphone as much Sorry. as possible, and how may we help you? Um, I wrote a letter, but some things have come up since that I thought I would like to address. Okay. And mainly I'm just speaking from the summary that was presented. Mm -hmm. um, the first point is that they didn't follow the rules, and I think that's, if that's true, they won't get approved. That it will be inspected, and it will be uh, de declined, and they'll have to redo it. So I don't think that's an issue. Uh, the erosion... When I look uh, at the um, waterway now, I see no such evidence. And I know that they did a number of extraordinary things to control erosion, including those uh, long okay. setbacks. And, yeah. and I'm going to interrupt you just like yep. I did other folks. We are not dealing with the seawall. We're not dealing okay. with any of that. We're dealing uh, okay. with the dock. I was just talking to that, that summary that I okay. was mentioned. Uh, the engine mile is... Um, so the view is a, an issue. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful view. Sleepy Lagoon is gorgeous. If you haven't seen it, come visit. But we're talking about a dock, uh, replacing an old dock of 750 square feet, which was in the view, 
dilapidated, ugly, falling apart, being replaced by potentially a, a finger dock of 325 square feet, less than half, in good shape. <laughs> um, the view comes from up a slope, I'm going to say at least eight feet higher than <clears throat> the water line. Plus even Judy, who's a little small person, adds five feet to that when she looks out her window. So she's up 13 feet above the water line, looking out over 325 square feet of dock. Probably isn't going to diminish her view a whole lot. Um, you're, oh, we're not talking erosion. OK. Um, I think that's the main thing. OK. Gentlemen, any questions? Thank you very much. Sure. I wrote a letter before. I told we, you that. We got it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else uh, speak in favor or opposition? May I have the applicant back, please? Any final comments, sir? Lot of, most of it got addressed. Um, we're okay. just trying to get get into the you know into that property line properly with the boat. You know, originally we didn't change the the direction so much. If you look at the way the plot is, you know, we're coming perpendicular to each section and try to square it off. If you try to put a boat lift the way the original one was, it would be sticking over into the property na neighboring to the east. So that's that's an inaccurate description of how to put a lift in on a property. You want to be somewhat perpendicular or parallel, I should say, to the length of the property. When they when they enter the dock that you're going to build, the lift that you're going to build, yes, sir. will they be coming in straight? They would be coming in per, um, parallel. Because I'm looking at a picture of the old dock, and, and in the old dock, that was angled they're coming at an angle. Yes. Is this going to be more straight? If you could pull up angle? this old plot that he submitted, uh, or no, I, I, but yeah, if you look at it, it would be you know the, the pie is like this, and yeah. they'd be coming straight like that. Okay, and that was the initial intention. So it's probably a little more straighter than the old. It's absolutely was. more. Yeah. Okay. When we when we design, I, I've been in the business twenty seven years, and we always design other than the river when the uh, riparian rights are perpendicular to the channel of the rivers. So, you know, if you have a property line like this and the channel's like this, your dock can be sitting at an angle. Right. But when it comes to properties on canals, we try to some, be somewhat straight and bring them in accordingly. Mr. McCann? No questions. Mr. Higgins? No questions. Anything else you'd like to add? Not that I can think of. All Thank right. You for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please have a seat. Gentlemen, what, what's your plan? I'm sorry, ma'am, the, the public time is over. We gave time for that, and so that is finished. All right. Gentlemen, what's I your pleasure? I'll make a motion. Please. For the three variances as depicted in the the survey, I make a motion that we accept it. We have a motion to approve the variances as depicted in the survey. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Discussion? No. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make some Please. comments. Um, although I second the motion, I'm not so, I'm not so sure I support it. Um, the property is a unique property these pie shapes at the end of the canal has always been an issue I'm sure that your contractor could could tell you and probably your solution is the best solution you can put forward and and I don't disagree with that um, I don't personally like limiting people's use of their properties um, I think they should be able to use their properties as they see fit as long as either within code or reasonable um, variance from the code um, unless it impacts the, the community or other neighbors um, and that's what I have to consider. Is your, is, your, is your variance request, if we approve it, is that going to negatively impact your neighbors? And um, I'm not necessarily convinced it does at this point. Um, I've heard some arguments on both sides, 
But what I would, what I'd like to see personally for me to support it is to pursue it in the, in, as the minimal variance needed, the minimal width needed on that dock. And to do that, as Mr. Rhodes had mentioned earlier, maybe lose one of those finger piers on the, on the side of the house by the Chandlers. I'm not so sure that's going to satisfy them, but I think it's, it's, it's reasonable. It's a, um, you know, it, it's a little give and take, and it would certainly allow for a, a few more feet of view from, from that house. So um, that's going to be my position. I, I'm, I think the walkways that were built within the posts themselves anyhow. Oh, you need two posts for the walkways, right? Yeah, closer than two feet, it won't. Right. Can't drive I'm sorry. Please come back to the microphone. Because we're asking him a specific question, that's why. He's the builder, and so we've got a specific question about the building. Yeah, we can, we can address and, and, and do something like that. The only issues that I would have is, you know, anything less than two foot, getting two poles next to each other, they undermine each other. There's a cantilever system, but they're known to only last about five years. So we try to stay away from that and always use a two pole system. If we denied the West variance, would you still be able to put the dock in? I'd figure it out. I mean, it, it would, it would, well, not within the seven and a half feet. I'd still have to be within that seven and a half feet. Right. So like I can limit it to, you know, if I make the boat lift 11 foot on center on the, on the slip and the two foot on the east side, that gives me 13 feet. And what do we have now? We got 12, well, you're, you're requesting 16. a five foot variance of the seven and a half right. variance. So you're coming within two and a half feet uh, of the property line. My I question is, is there a way more. to move that so you're in within that seven and a half feet or no? Well, yeah, if you can get me to the zero property line on the east side. Now that I'm, that I'm impacting the other. Okay, so then stay at the two or two and a half, I think it was. And then two and 11, that's 13. And I think we're asking for 16 wide, if I'm not mistaken. I, don't, I didn't bring up my folder. 16. Yeah, so we're asking for a minimum of 13 without the west side walkway. Well, and I can shrink my slip to 11 foot because their boat's only 18 foot long. It's not a very big boat. So what would your west variance need to be at that point then? Uh, I'd have to see the survey. Um, but it would be, well, if we're, at, if we're subtracting three feet, so I would say five foot from his property line. And that's just a guesstimation. Five to five and a half feet. So we could adjust and I've got to ask if we I don't even know if we can do this we could adjust the variance from the one side to two and a half feet instead of five and a half feet we're we're asking two and a half on both sides right now request a variance five and a half feet from the required seven and a half feet setback may I go get my uh I'm sorry Mr. Chair, am I reading this wrong? So, so the the um, the, f the first variant instead of being five point five feet, second second, second, second one. Half, so instead five. of five and a half, it'd be five feet. Correct. That that's what I was asking. Yeah. I might be mistaken. I, I, I was in listening. I was trying to figure it out myself. So can we make that adjustment? Yes, you can. As long as, long as it's as less than the variance yeah. that the requested, you, if that's within your purview. So we would change that to five. Five feet from the seven and a half feet. No. No, two feet. Two and a half feet from the five and seven and a half feet. Right, setback. it'd be it'd be two oh. and a half feet yeah. from the Am seven correct? and a half feet. That would leave them five feet. Do you see what I'm doing? And that alleviates a lot of, I mean, that gives them another five feet that you're not protruding into their area. And it also gives us more safety in regards, I'm, I'm dealing with what the request is, okay? It also gives them more safety in regards if they decide, maybe they're not gonna build a boat dock, but somebody down the road buys that house and wants to, then there's more room for them to be able to do that. that that's what I'm dealing with, okay? That's what my, where my mind is. Okay, yeah, I was reading the two and a half for the width of the walkway, not the setbacks, I apologize. So, we'll so if we change number two to say, two and a half feet from the required seven and a half feet setback, You'd be okay with that? Say that one more time, please. Okay. On the east side. 
on the, on the side the, facing on their the property. Side. Okay. Two and a half feet on the southwest side. from the required seven and a half feet setback. Right. So we have to be five foot off their property line. Yes. Projected out. Yes. Okay. Five foot. And the other one will have. It, it, we would stay with the 5.5. 5.5. 5. 5. Right. Because I don't see it as a problem on that side. Right. Is that doable? I don't seem to have that that um, proposal with the variance on me. If you if you I, lost I, the the finger pier on the west side, it would be fine. As long as we right, have so that, on, that's we about have on east side, and that's two. That's and actually eight. actually southwest side. Southwest, excuse me. I was going to go down and show show them what we're okay. talking okay, about. Okay, please. You understand what I'm trying to do? Yeah, if we can get rid of the west walkway or the southwest walkway. So you, what we want to do, Davin, is reduce this to 11 feet, correct? But see, it's showing two foot off the property line. I know, but we're okay. talking about this side. Right, and that's so, two so as well. Right there is two. So you take that two right there, two right there, that's four. and one foot, that's that gives five. you five. Yeah. So that gives you two and a half feet from the seven and a half. I'm, I'm seven okay with that. I can, make, I can make that work. Okay. Yes. No, not if we move it. I'm, I'm okay with that. So that gives the-, the That would work? Because right now the, the variance has two foot property line to the dock, two foot finger pier, and then shrinking the slip to 11 foot, that gives us five off their property line. I just need a head nod from you guys. Are you saying two and a half feet from her property line? No. You'll have no. five feet now. In, instead of only having two and a half feet, we're gonna double that. We're gonna increase it to five feet. No, 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 no. One point of clarification, they're on one side, and I'm on the other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's She's right, four, four, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. All right. No, you'll still be two and a half, or two, whatever, whatever the no, that east five. side is, five feet. Okay, it's not going to happen. Um, okay. So the so the issue is the issue is if 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 they're going if we're going to keep them to have to comply with code, they can't have a dock. So we're trying to come up with a solution where y'all can have your docks, y'all can live your lives, you can ha you make best use of your properties. Um, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Only at the furthest, ex furthest point out, not right at the property line. So right at the property line. Currently they're supposed to come in seven and a half feet from the property line. We're gonna give them two and a half feet instead of five and a half feet, which means they're going to be further away than they were before. On the, well, on the southwest side. He's still yes. going to have the two foot on the east side. Correct. Yes. yes. It's only going to affect the southwest side. That is correct. That, that's what I'm thinking. Because that seems to be where the problem in regards to future use is in my mind. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So for all intents and purposes, they have a seven and a half foot setback on the southwest. We'll have a five foot on ours. So that's 11 and a half feet that they'll have ability to access their property for a boat lift. Well, they can't build within that, but that's what they'll have. Correct. Well, you have, you have a hundred foot. Okay, guys, 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 I'm sorry. You can't address each other. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Higgins. I'm trying to swallow all of this. So I, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion, if I could, please. That variance number one remain the same. Variance number two is the one I've been dealing with. I want to make sure I'm correct. Mr. Mr. Chair, as the chairman, you can't I have make, to take I can't it. make it. I'm yeah. sorry. You have yeah. to recuse yourself while I take it back for a second here. Probably be easier for Jack just to do the motion. Easier for me to do the motion? Yeah. Just amend that number two be two and a half feet instead of five and a half feet. The motion that I made previously, previously, we're going to amend the a difference of the one that says two to two and a half feet. The others remain the same, one and three. So two will be two and a half feet in place of 5.5 .5 feet. Second. Second. 
All right, I need to go. Are there any other discussion, guys? No. Sir? None. Six points. Yeah. Special conditions and circumstances oh. exist which are not applicable to other lands, building structures, and the applicable zoning classification. There are special conditions and circumstances so in that the shape of the property is not normal. Uh, that it, we see it a lot, but it, it comes to a point versus being a wide area. And, and so you have to get very creative in, in trying to make this happen. That special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. He didn't create it. Um, you know, his doc obviously is what he's wanting to build, but he didn't create those circumstances. The granting of the variance created will not confer on the applicant any special privileges that is denied by the provision of the chapter. The other lands, buildings, or structures in the identical zoning classification. Again, we deal with this type of thing on a regular basis, and we do our best to make adjustments where necessary so that everybody has good use of their land. Number four, that the literal enforcement of the provision of this chapter would not would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the identical zoning classification of the provisions of the chapter and will constitute unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. It would, if we denied this, it would deny him of being able to put in that, that lift that many others would put in. I'm not sure that it creates an unnecessary and undue hardship by definition of what our hardship is, okay? That the variance granted is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. As we've adjusted that to make it, I, I think, as minimal as possible. Um, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of the chapter, and such use variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Again, we are dealing with the boat dock only, not the seawall, that kind of thing that uh, has been discussed. Uh, I don't believe that it would be interest to the area and, and would be beneficial in my opinion. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion to approve the variance as depicted on the survey. Um, uh, excuse me, it's not going to be depicted as on the survey. I'm sorry, it will not be depicted as corrected by the motion. As amended. Is that correct? Yes. We have a motion to approve. Numbers one and three are as depicted on survey, but number two has been amended. Yes. And that has been seconded. I'm making sure I'm legally right here, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Your variance is approved as amended. Now, ma'am. Oh, I have a question though, because it says seven and a half to five and a half, and you're going seven and a half to two? That's correct. So you totally no, 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 changed no, no. You're, what they're you're misunderstanding asking for? He, come on up. Okay. I he just asked. Mr. Chair, why don't why don't we finish the meeting and then oh, sure. Paul Paul can yeah Paul Paul can address her her concerns. At this time, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. I apologize. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.